Thanks for the support as a channel member, Raymond Golding. It's a sad day for Bourne and Sir Alan Hardy because on deadline day, I snuck for a £15 million Brazilian goalkeeper. I'm really into Brazilians at the moment. Hello and welcome to part 105 of Born Again. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we play Manchester United and Crystal Palace in the Premier League. Since you were last with me, um, this is what's been going on. Um, we lost a couple of games I ne wouldn't necessarily have expected to lose. But in this run of games where we wanted to pick up points, we certainly picked up some points too, beating Leicester and Middlesbrough. Christian Gomez, who's been getting a little bit of stick down in the chat uh, or comments. I've got to get used to using comments and chat interchangeably breaks me but he was getting a little bit of stick earlier in the year um but if we have a little look at his form since we've hit 2035 goal goal mm, no goal there goal goal no goal 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 he is in some form look at that for recent form of christian gomez he is he is fully settled into life in the premier league now has 14 goals from 25 appearances and i would suggest that puts him right up there amongst the Premier League's top scorers, right up there with Vedran uh, Stamenkovic, who is the uh, the young Serbian striker who we identified as as someone who's just going to be awesome. He's going to be a, a staple of this save for years to come because he's so very good. Um, but Gomez, right up there with him, as is Ryan Ramsdale from Everton, so two of the promoted clubs providing two of the top scorers in the Premier League at the moment. Um, and also, neither of us particularly in danger of getting relegated back down again either. Poor old Middlesbrough, as expected, look like they're going straight back down. But we're just about safe at this point. I mean, with, with 11 games to go, I, I, almost, I would almost say we are safe from 39 points. Obviously, 40 is the target, but we're obviously going to get to 40 at some point, even if it's not today. We're definitely going to get there. And Everton there on 37 as well. So um, we're safe with... 11 games to spare, which means I guess we start to glance upwards. It is just tentative glances at the moment because we are seven points behind Wolves who are in seventh place. So it's going to be a tall order to close that gap. But we are still in the FA Cup and with two potential routes into Europe, who knows what could happen? But first up, let's play Manchester United and we'll play them with our new goalkeeper, Mazinho, who I mentioned in the intro, 25-year-old um, Brazilian goalkeeper, capped at under-20 level, but he is a four-star goalkeeper, better than Stancic, better than Hardy. Hardy will still be my FA, FA Cup goalkeeper. Stancic will uh, will be done now. He'll be our third choice. Um, and to celebrate, we sold the third choice goalkeeper that we signed in the summer. Poznic has gone to Huddersfield for a quarter of a million pounds. We also sold Zajic to... Uh, Besiktas here, Bes them for seven million pounds. So, um, with all the transfer business now complete, we still have money in the bank. We still have money left in both of the budgets. Um, yes, we've accumulated a little bit of transfer debt, um, because we've spent what have we spent? If it shows us one hundred and eighteen million pounds, thirty four and a half has been brought in. When you when you factor in the two budgets that we had, we effectively had £60 million pounds for transfer budgets, plus £34.5 million that's come in there. So about £30 million pounds on an overspend, more than that would have gone on transfer debt. Yeah, nearly £60 million pounds of a transfer debt. So we want to go a little bit easy on that and not add £60 million pounds every year. But I think for a first year in the Premier League, to get us nicely established at this level, I don't think that does any harm as a first year because we should make that money back relatively comfortably so the team for the Manchester United game Mazzinho in goal a back four of Kongni, De Silva, Cuero and Orlando Anatovic and Mira in midfield Minich, Ruiz and Serna Jackie behind Robinson up front um, I'm now trying to work out why past Kev hasn't put Gomez in the team and it's because Gomez is injured for goodness sake past Kev and now you're all screaming for Amlang or Lahif and I'm screaming back at you. Yeah, but look at their ratings. There's nothing between any of them. Um, and Robinson, Robinson at least is the one who looks like he's going to be a Premier League player in the future. Albeit not for us, but he is going to be a homegrown Premier League player. So we will probably be looking to sign Robinson permanently as soon as the opportunity presents itself, just so that we have start building together, building some homegrown players at the club, even if they're not going to be regular starters, which Robinson hasn't been this year. He's been very much a substitute squad man. But if we're planning on getting into Europe sometime soon, we need homegrown players at the club. Um, and at the moment, Robinson will be the only one who's coming through. Amlang and Ansong will both get there too. But we need a couple more. 
and that means we can't afford to let any go, and that includes Robinson. Um, we've just conceded a pretty sloppy goal early on. We shouldn't really be conceding from set pieces. I would argue that guy's offside as well, right in Mazzinho's way. And he'd looked pretty good in his first four games. And um, the problem he's going to have, of course, is that you lot are going to instantly hate him because he's not Sir Alan Hardy. Even though Hardy's a two and a half star keeper, Mazzinho's a four star. Um, you'll all tell me all of the reasons why Hardy would still be a better option. But we have to move on. We can't be too sentimental. Um, Sir Tom Elliott didn't play for Nuneaton in the Premier League. Sir, to- Sir Mick Powell didn't play for home very much in the Premier League. And likewise, Sir Alan Hardy is not going to be a regular for Bourne in the Premier League. He's very much part of the, probably the most important part of what got us here. But now we're here, we have to build a team that will eventually be able to compete at this level. And Sir Alan Hardy isn't going to be part of that team. I hate to break that to you. Uh, Robinson with a a really poor attempt at a shot there, not doing himself any favours for forcing his way into this team. Um, We'll continue to say we owe Manchester United, but I am looking down at both Lahif and Amlang and wondering which one of those I should bring on for Robinson, who, I mean, he doesn't really look with it as a striker, does he? It's what we originally signed him to do, but he's spent almost his entire born career playing as an attacking midfielder. And that's that's Ruiz's spot now. There's no room for Robinson there. So, oh, Robinson's in here, though. And that's terrible. That is terrible. Minich, I think it was, who did really, really well to win the ball back. And Robinson just abs... And Robinson. He might as well be. He's coming off. And we're going to go with Amlang. That miss, that was enough to to convince me he's not the answer up front. So we'll give Amlang a good 30, 35 minutes to show me that maybe he is. He needs a chance like the one that... He would have scored that. I'm certain he would have scored it. Lahif probably would have done as well. And Altovic also not having the best of times. We don't have a central midfielder to bring on, though. So he's just going to have to stay on. Um, It's probably getting to the point where he might be someone we need to replace as we look forward to the summer. Um, He's obviously only here on loan. He's been a huge part of our team over the last three, four years. But I think his days might be numbered as a regular starter. Although a 7.05 isn't disastrous, but I don't know if I'm going to... It depends what kind of money Leicester would want for him. I don't want to be spending big money on him, that's for sure. Right, I'm going to bring Lahif on as well. And we're going to go two up top. And we're going to really try and push for an equaliser. So Lahif and Amlang. Amlang should be the poacher with Lahif as an advanced forward. And let's show some passion. United are frustrated... There's an opportunity here. They're only one goal ahead. We've got our, our two finishers on up front. We just need to create something. Somebody. Voros is going to come on for Minich and try and get something going from this left-hand side. We've got two inside forwards and two strikers. If we don't score a goal in these circumstances, we'll never score a goal again. Come on now. Get the ball forward. It's United with the throw. We need to intercept this and get it up the other end where we've got so many attacking players laying in wait. Uh, Mira does well to to get a hold of the ball there um, when it was bobbling around in the penalty area. But United, as seems to be the way at the moment, still managed to come away with the ball. But Orlando intercepts. Serna Jackie plays it forward. Lahif was fouled there. We're not even going to talk about the fact that Lahif threw on goal and there's a foul. Man United paying off the refs, I see. Interesting. Uh, Mazzino holds on nicely to the uh, to the free kick, but that's um, that was frustrating because they should have. You've got to at least be looking at a yellow card there for the defender who just hauled life down. We barely saw it because it was an afterthought to the highlight, even though it was one of the better opportunities we got in the entire game. If Lahif is quick, if he gets through there, he's one on one with the keeper, and we know he can score those. We saw him do it so many times last season. So to have him hauled down cynically, to me, that's a red card. But it wasn't even worth continuing the highlight to see what happened. Right, Cuero now plays it across to De Silva. We've got a couple of minutes left to try and grab an equaliser. De Silva plays it out to Voros, who's cutting inside and trying to find Serna Jackie. He does find him, who's just going to torment and run at his defender. Lahiv's in, finds Voros, and there is the equaliser. Amlang sort of looked at it and watched it go past him. Voros wasn't having any of that, though. 
And having started the move himself with this pass across to Serna Jackie, just charges forward, continues his run, continues his run like a really good inside forward should. And there he is to apply the finish at the end of the move. And it's born one Manchester United one. That's top of the table, Manchester United. And we've held them to a draw at home. And you know what? We played really well there. And we've now hit our 40 point target. Lovely stuff. I don't even remember who we're playing next. We are playing Crystal Palace. Let's go and try and beat them and get get started on this push into Europe. Just the one change for the Palace game, then Gomez fit enough to come back in, so we don't need to worry about the striker problem we had in that last game. Serna Jackie, um, only fit enough to play 75 minutes. We've just had an international break, so he's picked up a little bit of a knock whilst away. But obviously Voros plays on either wing, so he can come on as and when needed. Lahif and Amlang both still down on the bench as well, ready to come on if needed. Robinson joining them down there, and I'm thinking about it now. I'm thinking we probably didn't need three strikers down on the bench. We're underdogs for this game. Palace, though, are down in 17th place. So I would argue, on current form, underdogs my eye. We're looking up at a European spot. Palace trying to stay in the division. We're the big club here. What I mean, now I've said stuff like that. We're guaranteed to get absolutely battered. Uh, but here is Gomez. I want him to show you just how good he is now. Um, that, that bubbled pass, not so much. But he's in here, and there's a goal from Gomez. And he is going to show you just how good he is now. A 15th goal of the season for Christian Gomez. And don't you love it when a plan comes together? All those years of pushing Pavlov on you, and he never quite came off. I thought we were in the same situation with Gomez, and I was going to have to reluctantly admit that maybe I'm not a genius. But then Gomez has come good. Apparently, if you sling enough poo at the wall, some of it sticks. And Gomez definitely falls into that category. Serna Jackie with the flick on, trying to find Gomez, doesn't manage to find him. Um, and the Crystal Palace goalkeeper collects comfortably. Looking at how things stand at the moment, um, we're currently only five points outside of those Europa League qualification spots. I say Europa League. I would imagine seventh place is the Europa Conference League. Or is it only the League Cup that gets... I don't know how you qualify for the Europa Conference League. I assume one or two of these spots are Conference League rather than Europa League. I've not... Like we said when we were in non to Legend with Barnsley and we finally qualified for it, it's a tournament I'm pretty sure I've never played in because we qualified for it and then I moved on for Tottenham and we kind of bypassed it. So I'm not entirely sure how many Europa League spots there are compared to Conference League spots anymore. But... I if we find out this season, that means the next 10 games have gone really, really well. So I guess we'll just kind of wait and see what happens. We're putting pressure on the Palace keeper here. Gomez doing well to, to force what looked like a mistake, but in actual fact has led to a goal. That was some very, very good counter-attacking football from Palace. And it all started with their keeper just almost chipping it over Gomez when it, to me, it looked like a panicked clearance because he was under pressure. But in actual fact, he's found this guy in loads of space who I guess would have been marking Gomez if Gomez hadn't charged forward. And then they've just charged through the middle of us far too easily. I mean, there's, there's like six players in there who could have made the tackle and none of them got anywhere near the ball. So that was, that was just some pretty poor defending. Cuero, I guess the jury's still out on whether or not he's a centre-back. Um, he, we played him the first half of the season at right back, but obviously we now have Orlando as a right back. So, but I don't want to drop Cuero. Maybe, maybe he should be part of that three that we talked about a few episodes back, and bring um, bring what's his face back in the other Brazilian, um, whose name escapes me. Hugo, Vitor Hugo, that's his name, isn't it? Uh, maybe he needs, to, yeah, Vitor Hugo. Maybe he needs to come back in, and we could make it a three, and do away with having an attacking midfielder altogether. I mean, I don't want to change things too much because we're having a good season, but certainly against the better clubs, that's a lousy Ruiz, hears that he might get dropped and just does that. Can't drop a man who can score a free kick like that, can I really? We're having a good season against teams like Palace, against teams like Manchester United, who we've just played. That was a lovely free kick. We do tend to struggle, so maybe we need a, maybe we need a three at the back system. We're certainly better equipped to do a three at the back than we are to do a defensive midfielder situation because we don't really have anyone at the club who can play as a defensive midfielder and I don't really want to bring somebody in who's a specialist in that position to only play him in like selected away games 
whereas we could switch to a 5-3-2 for those kind of games. And I think Cogni in particular, and Orlando, Orlando seems to be getting there, but Cogni definitely would be a very, very good wing back, even though his his position suitability suggests otherwise. He is up and down that wing all day long. He's basically a mid. Look, there you go. He's so far up the wing. He's had to charge all the way back to get the ball. He's playing as a wing back already. Um, and Anatovic, Tamira, Ruiz, looking for options ahead of him. Gomez is there, but held his run back. But Serna Jackie didn't hold his. And there's Serna Jackie with his 11th goal of the season. It's 40 minutes on the clock. It's Crystal Palace 1, Bourne 3. And... All this, all this talk of Gomez, and it's easy to forget we have a, a bona fide wonder kid in the shape of Serna Jackie, but he's decided to remind us with a lovely piece of football there, cutting in from the right-hand side, slotting it underneath the goalkeeper, um, and it's 3-1, 3-2. Well, set pieces. We're good, at, we're good attacking with them. We could probably get a little bit better at defending them because this is almost a free header. I mean, it's not a free header because De Silva's there, who is the big six foot, six foot four defender we brought in specifically to help in set with with set pieces, ideally at the other end of the pitch. But you'd like to think he'd be able to defend them as well, right? Don't get complacent. Mira, I think, was ti was tiring. Yeah, Mira has taken some kind of knock. We don't. I guess Reed could come on in midfield if need be, or maybe we could try out this three at the back system I was talking about. We'll keep Mira on for now, even though he's. He's not in peak physical condition, um, but we don't really have anyone who can be a like for like change with him. And I don't want to, I don't think today is the day to experiment with a new tactic when we're already being a little bit porous at the back. Gomez is in again here, and that is a lovely individual goal from Christian Gomez. A 16th goal of the season for him now. I think he's only 20, 22, 22, 23. He's exactly the kind of player where in, in real life, if this, if this was reality, it might still happen in the save. But in reality, if Bourne get promoted um, with Gomez and Serna Jackie exploding onto the Premier League, playing the way they have this season, there is not a chance either of them are still at the club next year. They both get hoovered up by bigger and better clubs. It's going to be very interesting to see if the game accurately reflects that or if we can keep hold of these good young players who have just exploded onto the scene in the Premier League and looked awesome. I mean, just how old is he? 22. 22 years old for Christian Gomez. To to be amongst the Premier League's top scorer in his first year on the continent. Varos is going to come on to play there. And I think we probably do need to take Mira off at this point. We've got the two-goal lead. Reed can just come on and play in midfield. Rather than messing around too much with the system, Reed has played... Reed has played in central midfield plenty of times before, so he'll be fine slotting into that ball-winning midfielder role in there. I don't know why I've made those substitutions so early, but I guess I had my reasons. <laughs> I thought it was the 70th minute. That was my reason. Occasionally, we mix things up. Rather than doing a, a 70 and an 80, we'll do a 60 and a 75. Keeps you on your toes. You don't know when the substitutions are coming. Right, final change. I am tempted... I'm tempted to take Gomez off. In fact, who was it? Serna Jackie wasn't supposed to play a full game, was he? So Robinson can come on for him. That's that's the easiest thing to do. Um, Robinson on for Serna Jackie. He can play on that right-hand side. And hopefully it allows Gomez the opportunity to finish off a hat-trick, which he's had, a, he's had several games recently where he scored twice. I don't think he's yet got a hat-trick for home. Congney dancing. For, can Congney play wing-back? Yes. There's your evidence that he absolutely can just dancing through the Crystal Palace defence. Um, we're still showing there's only five points behind Liverpool in that seventh place. Their goalkeeper's come a long way to collect that long throw. If we'd have had um, De Silva just sort of stood in front of him ready for the flick on, I mean, I guess he probably doesn't come in that situation because if he's got to get round De Silva. But it would be interesting to see the chaos that could be caused by putting a six-foot-four giant stood in front of him so he can't come out and collect the throw on like that. And now to Vich, back to Cuero. Cuero to Orlando. Reed now um, playing playing in midfield and seemingly enjoying himself. And now to Vich, ball over the top, looking for Robinson, but it ends up with Gomez. Reed to Robinson. Ruiz, Gomez plays it into Robinson. This is sensational football again. We are much better than Crystal Palace. The league table already confirms it, but the way we've played at times in this game has been ridiculous. Gomez now with the header, um, can't quite direct it goals. It's not really his strength. 
aerial play. I don't really know why he's hovering around getting on the end of corners. Again, in that situation, where's De Silva? That's just a theme from all set pieces in this episode. Where's De Silva? He's supposed to be involved in all of them. Ruiz, ball over the top to Robinson. Robinson is in and Robinson scores. A first goal of the season for Robinson. He started the episode being hauled off for being terrible in front of goal. Clearly just needed the confidence of playing back in midfield again. And um, it's a it's a very nice finish. I guess when you're 4-2 up in the 91st minute, all the pressure to score goes away. It's a much lower pressure situation than 1-0 down against Manchester United. But he certainly finished that one very tidily. It finishes Crystal Palace 2, Bourne Town 5. There's certainly no fear of relegation anymore, is there? Lovely stuff. Right, we are still in the FA Cup as well. So if we manage to make it past Liverpool, um, we'll then have, I think, a quarter final plus one of these games coming up. And I think, I'd like to think we'll focus on a cup run from here. I'm not going to show you the Liverpool game because, I mean, I, I assume we'll probably lose it. At the time when I was planning this, showing you the league game seemed more important because we've now confirmed our safety. If we end up on a cup run as well, that just becomes a bonus and we can pick that bonus up from next time. If we don't, if we get knocked out by Liverpool now, we'll probably just go all the way through to the end of the season and uh, get stuck into transfers and stuff for next year. This is going very well. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.